And there is just something about setting up trail cameras in the whitetail woods. I tell you, this year has been so dry. I mean, I'm in my rain pants because normally I'm up to my waist in grass and it is soaking wet. And I mean, the tips of my boots aren't even wet. Like it is bone dry and has been all summer. Um, I'm setting up trail cameras later than I normally would, but boy, it has been a dry year. So hopefully we get a little bit of rain before the hunting season comes around. Um, I like to find a spot, you know, hopefully a funnel or a pinch point where I think there's going to be deer coming through. And then instead of setting up one camera on the main trail, I try to back to back cameras so they can't sneak around me. So I've got one set up here with back to back and I'm going to go 30, 40 yards to kind of the next set of trails over and do the same thing. While that uses up a lot of cameras in one area, it allows me to know that if there's deer coming by, uh, I, they're not getting past. So this here is the perfect tree for me because I can point them in both directions. And now, you know, kind of a almost 80 yard swap through here, I'll have a pretty good idea what's coming by. So I've got them both in video mode. So early season, a lot of times the bucks will start marching in a group of three or four. And if you, if you don't have burst on, you'll miss them. So on a 10 or 15 second video, should catch everything. When most people look at Jeffrey's hunting resume, it's easy to see that he is a very accomplished mule deer hunter and a master of the spot and stock game in the open prairies. But what might be less apparent is the distinct passion that Jeffrey has for the chess match of trying to figure out a giant old whitetail buck in the southern farmlands. Being from the southern part of the province, the area isn't typically known for producing giant whitetails, but somehow, Jeffrey always seems to find a couple of different bucks on his covert trail cameras that any hunter would be excited to chase. But trying to outsmart one of these cagey old deer is a never-ending challenge. From the time these bucks grow their first set of antlers, they are already a target for many hunters in the area and managing to survive to three or four years old is a feat in itself. But for a deer to survive until five years old in this part of the province is incredibly rare. And those are exactly the kinds of deer that Jeffrey sets his sights on. The oldest, smartest, and oftentimes the largest bucks living in the entire area. For the 2021 season, the one buck that Jeffrey had his eye on was an old warrior eight point that he had called Willie Nelson. Jeff had known about him for a few years now, but had never been able to lay eyes on him in person before. He lived in the same area that he always hunted, but somehow managed to stay hidden in the shadows, no matter how much time Jeffrey spent sitting there. So I'm in my tree a full hour before legal light. Hopefully that gives everything a time to settle down and I didn't bump anything on my way in. So feeling good. Wind is perfect. Maybe today's the day old Willie Nelson slips up. Cool morning. September 23rd today. Feeling good. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Covert Scouting Cameras, Vortex Optics, Old Smokes Coffee, Top Notch Taxidermy Studio, and the MD of Bonneville. This segment of the show is brought to you by Wood Wheaton Super Center. A proud supporter of our outdoor heritage. Time to check my favorite covert camera here before I 
slip into my tree. It was on this tree here. <laughs> that one fell down, so I had to move it one tree back. Now, let's see here. Oh, there he is. There he is. Wow. He came by two days ago. Two days ago. At 7.31. Wow, let's see if we can see this. Boy, that's a good sign he's still around. I just need him to come by about 25 minutes earlier. Jeffrey would continue to play cat and mouse with this particular buck for the entire month of September and well into October. The more intel he gathered, the more confident he became. But it didn't matter where he sat or how early he got into his stand, Willie Nelson simply refused to show himself in daylight. And after spending 15 days in a row during the middle and end of October sitting for this deer, Jeffrey couldn't help but think that his time was quickly running out. But here's the cool thing. Just as the hunting starts to get tougher and tougher down south in the prairies, the northern bush is just getting fired up. So Jeffrey once again jumped in his truck and made the drive north to try and fill his tag on a big old body northern Alberta bush buck. What most of you don't know is that Jeffrey has been making the trek north to hunt with me for a number of years now, dating all the way back to 2016. On that particular hunt, we had one good encounter with a neat buck with a lopsided rack, but after that, we hardly seen a deer. With life being busy, it wouldn't be until late October of 2020 when Jeffrey would once again come up and try to hunt a scrape line with his bow. We had him set up in a spot that the year prior would have been a slam dunk. There wasn't more than two days between pictures of shooter bucks cruising the scrapes, and we had banked everything on history repeating itself. But as much as whitetail are a creature of habit, luck still plays a large role in hunting the bush, and Jeff would spend three days in the stand, only seeing a doe with a pair of fawns. Sun's going down. Dan will probably be here in half an hour or so. And that pretty much wraps up my season. My archery season, at least. I have no doubt that a good buck is going to walk by this very stand sometime in the next week, in fact. But unfortunately, I won't be here for him. <laughs> so, oh well, it's how it goes. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Wood Wheaton Supercenter, True Fire Releases, Victory Archery, Black Widow Innovations, Wapiti River Outdoors, and Federal Premium Ammunition. This segment of the show is brought to you by the MD of Bonneville. Lake adventures happen here. That's the deer I know. Yeah, that's the deer I would love to see you kill. He's got a sweet sticker this year. In his, oh, on his the tins, inside right? there. Yeah. He's never had that before. And I think he's bigger this year than he's ever been. He's tall, he's, right? He's tall. He's a very unimpressive frame, but really long times. And he's a 6x5, so he's... Gotta be. And then there's this real ancient, ancient old ape. Only the brow time. Yeah, just like a dagger, a sword of a brow time. And just a massive body. <laughs> like compared to that last I one. I know. The two year old. <laughs> and He's then twice him. the size. Yeah. He'd be a no brainer. Like if he comes in, I don't know if he's 120 or 140. Like he's just an ancient old deer. I've had him for the same thing three years. 
we'll be able to easy tell which one he is yes. with that wicked brow tine. Only one that's got a cork brow tine. That's funky. But he's a cool deer. Like, I, I would love to see you shoot him. Because <laughs> look there, at that body. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be able to see him from a long ways and you would know just by looking. So where was that? Was that the this same one, spot? This one's like probably 30 yards from that flash camera. Wait, oh, wow. this is the same oh, yeah. quad trail, yeah. and then the flash camera's over here, and then this one's here, and your stand is just up there. And that's, that's a big scrape right there. It's a big scrape, and then that other scrape behind your stand is just up in these trees. basically just up this about 50 yards you'll you'll be able to hear them well maybe in the rain you're not gonna be able to hear much but they cruise this bottom and then they also cruise up and there's a big scrape just up there and you're gonna be kind of above that scrape looking down at it first morning up here in northern alberta november 5th last year i was here until the 4th of november and right after i left the scrape I was sitting over had my target buck on it two days later or a day later anyway I decided to come two days later <laughs> so I'm here the fifth sixth and seventh which isn't long out here in the bush it's about just spending your time you put yourself in the highest odds spot that you can find and then you sit there as long as you can. Dana found this little ridge here above a really active scrape line. He was getting quite a few daylight pictures on the covert. So it seems that they're kind of running this ridge, checking these scrapes, heading to another spot. And here's just a little bit of an open pocket that we try to put the decoy up in see if that might bring them in from a little bit further away if they aren't coming right down this ridge to me maybe they'll see this decoy and come in take a look so far I've sat six days up here and on two of those days I have seen a deer on the other four days I have seen nothing unlike his previous hunts in the bush he was almost immediately seeing deer once the sun came up. We had him set up where he could see a bit further, and there were young bucks cruising through all morning. Two does and a fawn behind me. I just heard something big behind me here. Good buck, good buck. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Mad Ramps, Scree Gear, High Mountain Seasonings, Block Targets, Eye Hunter, Glendale Targets, and Deluxe Wall Tents. This segment of Fatal Impact is brought to you by Tourism Saskatchewan. This segment of the show is brought to you by Deluxe Wall Tents, built in Canada for Canadian conditions. I just couldn't get him to stop me. I thought. 
thought maybe with this rain they'd want to come freshen up scrapes and that's exactly what he did. Uh, by the time I got him ranged 35 yards and got drawn back he had turned and started moving and I couldn't stop him and when I did stop him he was actually off camera <clears throat> and he just stopped for two seconds but his vitals were right behind a tree. After narrowly missing an opportunity earlier in the morning, a few small bucks cruised past before Jeffrey glanced back towards that same scrape. And there stood the massive bodied, bladed brow tined eight pointer staring right through him. I should have shot him with the rifle. There's nothing worse than making a bad shot. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Should have shot him with the rifle. aiming down like this and when I shot I bumped my bag my backpack with my quivalizer I can see right where he went here though so hopefully I'll start seeing some blood or my arrow or something here Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I don't believe it. Oh my goodness. Look at this deer. I'm not even a hundred yards. I'm, I'm 60 yards from where I shot him. Oh my goodness. I am in shock. What a deer. What an incredible deer. I just feel so undeserving of such an amazing, amazing whitetail. Honestly, I owe this all to Dana. I mean, he does, he does all the legwork. He knows this bush like the back of his hand. And I just come up here. This is my third year coming up. And in those first two years, I only saw deer on two days. Four of the days, I saw nothing. But this year was different. Yesterday saw seven deer, which is amazing for the bush. And today, that little young nine point came by 
and this. The crazy brow tine eight point, which is the buck we were after. He had this same crazy brow tine last year. He just put on a ton of mass. What a deer. What an incredible deer.